Get over here! Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault and you're watching Animal Logic. For most of us, the only scorpion in our lives is the aforementioned Mortal Kombat character or the 80s band so well known for Rocky Like a Hurricane. Anyone? It's my jam. Real scorpions, however, are much more impressive. There's nothing else that quite evokes the same level of iconic fear and respect than that predatory arched tail. All scorpions basically look the same, from the largest, the emperor scorpion, which is 20 centimeters long, to the newly discovered smallest scorpion, Microtidius minimus, which is only 10 millimeters long, fully grown. I never thought I'd say this, but that is one cute scorpion. Scorpions may have been one of the first animals to crawl out of the ancient seas and walk on land. They are extremely old evolutionarily. They're about 430 million years old. Recently, scientists have found the fossil of a giant marine scorpion, also known as a Eurypterid, that was two meters long. The Acutoramus cummings eye had huge claws, the size of tennis rackets, there are over 1,700 species of scorpion, found everywhere in the world but Antarctica, thanks to humans. Scorpions hide away in boat shipments and even sometimes on airplanes, as a woman flying from Los Angeles to Portland recently found out when she was stung while sitting on a plane, which I'm sure will lead to a very late sequel to Snakes on a Plane. Although scorpions are arachnids, like spiders, they do look very different. Their bodies are divided into three distinct parts, head, abdomen, and tail. The head section is where those nasty looking claws are located. The scientific term for them is pedipalps. They use their pedipalps to grab and immobilize prey, as well as to defend themselves. The real action is found in the tail section, which is menacingly curved over their back. Their tail consists of five segments, with the last one, the telson, containing the sting. All scorpion species have a venomous barb, although only about 25 species inject venom that can kill a human. The trick is knowing which ones, I guess. Some scorpions can even spray their venom, which is intended to blind anyone who's bugging them. Recent research, like within the past week, has shown that scorpions are pretty choosy about when and whom they spray with venom. Venom is energetically costly to produce, so it makes sense to use it sparingly. Scorpions actually estimate the scariness of an enemy and adjust their spray accordingly. No point in going to DEFCON 1 for every little threat that walks by. A recent study has shown that when a scorpion needs to turn and run, they can detach their tail and consequently, their anus. They heal quickly, but the tail, stinger, and anus never grow back forcing them to live out their lives, up to eight months at this point, with little defense. While poops build up inside them, until they die. Oh, and many of the scorpions continue to mate during this fun poop buildup process. Recently, Dr. Jim Olson has discovered a way to use the venom from a brilliantly named Deathstalker scorpion to fight cancer. In the operating room, the precise boundaries of tumors are almost impossible to see, and often slivers of cancer get missed. Olsen has developed a compound based around scorpion venom, which lights up the malignant cells in a patient's body in a fluorescent sheen, allowing surgeons to easily spot the cells. The venom from the Brazilian yellow scorpion has been found to contain antimicrobial and anti-cancerous properties. That being said, milking scorpions for their venom is a very tricky process and involves administering small shocks to the scorpion, and it is costly. Scorpion venom is one of the most expensive liquids in the world, coming in at around $38 million per gallon. Scorpions and their predators may be able to help us deal with pain. The tiny southern grasshopper mouse, the Onocomis toridus diet, primarily consists of Arizona bark scorpions. And in the process of attacking them, they've been observed taking multiple stings without so much as a flinch. A recent study has revealed that when the grasshopper mouse is stung by a scorpion, instead of sending pain signals to the brain, it sends the opposite, and the venom ends up acting like an analgesic or painkiller. Scientists hope to use this to find new ways to ease pain in humans. This next one, it's a bit of a mystery. When scorpions are exposed to UV light from a black light, they glow a neon blue, which sounds super useful for your next hiking trip. No one really knows why they do this, but the leading theories are that they use it to see each other better, to dazzle prey, or to act as sunscreen. Scorpions, unlike spiders, are ovoviviparous. 
That's a long word to describe animals that hatch eggs within their body, rather than laying them and leaving them out to hatch on their own. Mom scorpion hatches her little darlings one by one, called scorplings, which is a real word and not just something from World of Warcraft. And they ride around on her back until they go through their first month and are old enough to go it alone. I thought this might be cute, like the opossums we saw in a previous episode, but it's not. It's just not for me. What animal should I check out next? Please let me know in the comments and be sure to subscribe for new episodes of Animal Logic every week. Thanks for watching. Scorpion wins animality. Thank <laughs> you.